You guys saw the title, and I know what you're thinking. How the heck did you end up with two bass boats for $2,600? Well, this is how it happened. Six months ago, I purchased a house. This house ended up being a huge disaster. The house ended up needing so many repairs that I literally went broke. I'm not kidding you guys. I had no money. When I hit an all-time low financially, I was left to sell the one thing that I had money in, and that was my bass boat. Selling the bass boat literally bailed me out of going bankrupt on this house. At this point in time, I have $4,500 in my bank account. That's not a lot, especially when you own a house. But if you guys know me, I fish for a living, so I needed a boat. I did what any other person does when it comes to getting a deal, and that was hop on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. I bought one boat, and then literally a week after, I found my dream boat at an affordable price. So I did what any person should not have done, and that's go buy both of them. So here I am, $4,500 in my bank account, spending $2,600 on boats for a full risk to see if I can turn two boats from zero to hero for as cheap as possible. Welcome back, guys. I missed you. Let's get into the video. Uh, should I have done this? So the first boat that we bought is this blue one right here. To be honest, I paid more than I would have liked to given the work that it needs, but this right here is a Tidecraft XV 150FS. Believe it or not, this isn't specifically a bass boat. It actually was a fishing ski originally, but it has been transformed into pretty much a bass boat. This is a 17 foot boat that is honestly pretty cool. I had a big vision looking at it. I didn't originally plan on buying it, but it was the best option that I had found given the fact that I had been looking for a long time on Facebook Marketplace. So the person that was selling it wanted 1500 for it. I tried to get it for a thousand and basically the lowest I could get them down to was 1100. Now 1100 was way more than I really would have liked to pay for this boat, but given the fact that the market's ridiculous right now, it just is what it is. So let's check it out. So like I was saying before, this boat was originally a fishing ski. Right here on the deck actually used to be seats for somebody to sit in the bow. Now the original owner had covered everything up, made his own deck for the bass boat. And at first I was like, heck yeah, this is awesome until I got up here and stood on the deck. The back half of the deck is in great condition. The front on the other hand, well, let me get up there and show you guys. The deck is not supposed to feel like a trampoline up here. So seems like we're gonna be doing some fiberglass work, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. Coming to the back of the boat, the deck back here is honestly really solid. I think a lot of portions of this deck might have been actually replaced with aluminum. I'm not sure, but it's very solid. Down here, the seats are definitely cooked. I mean, they are a mess. Actually, they're not even attached. I didn't even know that. So it does have seats. Not sure if we're gonna try and refurb these seats, but we'll see what happens. Same with the driver's seat. It's pretty much falling apart. It's not in good shape. Then coming to the back, we got some more pros and cons. Pros, it has an engine. Cons, no idea if it works. So the engine that was put on here is supposed to be a working engine. The gentleman had put it on himself and he just never got around to wiring it up. He said that the 150 that was originally on it, they blew it up and they went ahead and threw a 50 on here because they had a working 50. So he just never got around to hooking up the electrical. So that's gonna be the biggest, most annoying part about this whole build for me personally is how the heck are we gonna take all this wiring and redo it? I have no experience hooking up engines like literally nothing. It's all just, it's got a jack plate. So that's my biggest concern with the boat is like, is this thing gonna even fire up when we put it together? Because that's what's gonna become most expensive. And um, yeah, so that's tough. This is gonna make a really awesome tournament boat if I ever get that far with it. It has live wells on live wells on live wells. One here, and then it's got one up front. This one, it's like big enough to hold. I don't even know what you'd put in here. You could have a party in this one. Look at this. Ugh. Look how big that thing is. The rear live well is absolutely massive. As for the rest of it, I think we're gonna be able to bring the sparkly fiberglass, you know, the whole paint job back to life. It's, it's pretty rough, but it's just sun beaten. 
nothing that I've never seen before. You could see where the trolling motor was, that there's just a massive color difference. And I really think we can bring this color back from this color. So I've seen it done before. So we're gonna try and make it happen. But aside from that, for being, you know, a 90s boat, it's not in terrible shape. So there you guys have it. There is the Tidecraft. I know some of you guys are probably cringing like, oh my gosh. I'm excited. This is gonna make for a really cool 17 foot boat. Not sure if we're gonna keep this one permanently. Maybe when we're done, we'll sell it. Maybe if these videos do really well, we'll give it away. I don't know, we'll see. Now we're gonna show you guys the boat that I am just so ecstatic about. And that is this Bass Cat Pantera 2. There's actually quite a story behind this bass boat right here. I came across this bass cat on Facebook Marketplace two hours away from where I lived for a very, very reasonable price. It was so well priced that I thought it was fake. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was spam. I thought somebody was trying to scam me out of money. The guy selling this boat literally had his number on Facebook. I called it, texted it over and over again and could not get a response. Seeing this post on Facebook turned me into like a crazy ex-girlfriend. I went and looked at the guy's Facebook profile because at this point I thought maybe this person doesn't exist. Maybe this is spam and I'm just wasting my time. I click on his Facebook profile and he had a post posted two hours ago. I clicked on the profile of the person he took a picture with and I DM'd him. I said, hey man, I know this sounds really weird, but your buddy is selling a boat that I want so gosh darn bad. It's like my dream boat. Is there any chance you can try and get a hold of him for me and find out if it's still for sale? The dude responded instantly and he goes, sure bud, let me call him real quick. Three weeks of considering doing something like this because I thought it was kind of creepy and weird. It works instantly. So the friend gets back to me. He still got the boat. He apologizes for the lack of communication. Here we are. So kind of a crazy story. Sometimes you just got to go out of your way to try and make something happen. And in this case, it worked in my favor. Super crazy, but. So this right here is a 1996, 19 foot Bass Cat Pantera 2. This boat is sick. It needs some work, but it's in very reasonable shape. I paid $1,500 for this thing. That's, that's pretty legit. I think that's a good deal. You guys let me know what you think, but if you know anything about Bass Cats is they are not cheap bass boats. So the main things wrong with this boat are one, the interior. It's, it's quite the mess as you guys could see. And then we have a issue on the outside. From looking at it and talking to some buddies, I don't think this is the original gel coat. I think they put like an automotive spray gel coat on this boat because it flakes off like super easily. Like if you guys take a look back here, I mean, it comes right off. So we're gonna have to clean that up, kind of figure something out there, but I don't believe it's gonna be too crazy. If anything, it's just gonna be tedious and annoying. So as you guys can see, the interior, it's a little rough. The floor in this thing, is solid. I cannot believe that the fiberglass isn't just completely shot on this boat. I mean, there's practically no softness except for right here a little bit by this drain, which is not a huge deal. I was totally expecting the floor to be completely rotted out. I mean, it is, it is rock solid. I couldn't be any more ecstatic on the fact that the entire casting deck, front and back, is rock solid. Dashboard, eh, seen better days, but we'll get that fixed, not a big deal. On the back, we have a Johnson GT150. Good news, the engine runs. The guy had it running. The bad news is, uh, well, he lost the keys when I went to pick it up. He can't find where the keys are at, so we're gonna have to get a new ignition and key, unless I can call Basscat and try and get a replacement key, but I doubt it. Other than that, I couldn't be happier about potentially having a Bass Cat Pantera for 1500 bucks. Let me know in the comment section down below right now, are you guys team Tidecraft or team Bass Cat? We're gonna rebuild both these and uh, just see if we can bring them back to life. I'm super excited to bring you guys this project. It's gonna be a lot of fun. If you guys are new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Every video is not gonna be about 
these boats, but we're gonna have updates weekly on these boats, hopefully, and uh, some other vlogs and stuff as well. So good to be back, missed you guys. I'll see you next time. Oh, I really hope this isn't the worst decision of my life. <laughs>